Hi everybody! Hi! Asi! Hello! Welcome back! Today we want to talk about what really is Pulp Fiction all about and we agree that it's about second chances. No. I'd knock that shit off if I was you. You don't agree? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a second chance. Give me a second chance. It's about finding meaning, it's, I think that's what I would say. Like finding meaning, finding uh, something which is uh, meaningful in a culture which is kind of has a problem with meaning, like has a meaningless culture in a way. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. Oh, so I'm first? Yeah, you go first. You want me to go first? Yes, you go first. Second chance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it is about second chances because so many of the characters have a second chance. Some of them take it, some of them don't. Nah, you mother <laughs> Jules. He has a second chance, he's almost killed. He's given that second chance and he, okay, I'm out of here. I'm gonna do something else. At the end, he gives a second chance to Team Roth, the honey bunny, whatever uh, character, when they're robbing the, the diner. diner. Yeah. The truth is, you're the weak and I am the tyranny of evil men. But I'm trying, Ringo. I'm trying real hard to be the shepherd. I'm buy he's buying his life from him, giving him money, I'm buying your life. And that's how Jules himself is exercising in a tangible way the second chance that he was given. Celos. Huh? You better kill me. Yeah, somebody's gonna get killed. Somebody's gonna get their motherfucking head blown up. Hold it right there, goddammit. Also has a second chance. He's over there getting raped. And Bush gives him a second chance. And Bush gives him a second chance by saving him. Step aside, Bush. And then Marcellus gives Bush a second chance. He's like, okay, we're cool. Just have to leave town. But we're cool. Mia has a second chance. She's almost dead. <laughs> okay, now you can do better. The only one who didn't take uh, his second, second chance is John Travolta, Vincent Vega, when Jules tells him, we have a chance here, don't just dismiss it. Yeah. Doesn't take the second chance. Mm -hmm. He's dead. And the guy with the got shot by the head. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Marvin. Yeah. In yeah. the car. In the car. No yeah. second chance. No second chance. <laughs> Just first chance. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that. Yeah. <laughs> the guy that was eating the burger, he was given a second chance. Just don't say what again. <laughs> a third chance even he was given. Said what? Okay. Uh, no. What? 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 Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. What? It's your what, fault. What does it mean, like a second chance? What? A like, second chance to what? Like what? Go f a bit further with this premise. Like, to change your ways. To, to do your things. Life. Di yeah, yeah, yeah. To live differently than the way that you lived it before. Do you think that uh, Marcellus will? change his uh, way of life because what happened? Do you think Mia will? I do think he will change his life. We saw him before, it was after, it was afterwards, but it happened chronologically before, at the pool, super clean, super happy, nice shirt. He was raped. He was raped. He's going to live his life differently. differently. What's <laughs> going to be now? What's the new Mercedes? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know, but it's going to be different. Okay. It's going to be, I think, maybe more humble. I think that sort of thing. I don't want to make uh, fun of uh, male rape. I think it shatters your confidence mm. in some ways. And we immediately saw the result. He's like, okay. So we cool? Yeah, we cool. Now I understand maybe that what I thought was, was most important, my pride, he was preaching to Butch about yeah. his pride, but yeah. now that was Marcellus's pride. Gotta work through it. That's pride fucking with you. Fuck pride. Yeah, he worked through it. <laughs> you gotta work that <laughs> through that shit. 
<laughs> and he worked through that shit. He said, okay, money, my yeah. pride, whatever. Butch would never do that to me. There are worse things in the world. Do you remember the phone call? Something, ah, yes, something shake it. In my perspective, I see it as a movie about finding meaning, okay? Finding a meaning in something which is, was not meaningful before. If you see, like, it starts from the very beginning through, like, what is the hamburger, and it can be called, like, Mac, right. Big Mac here and something right. else there. Like so the thing. foot massage, is the foot massage meaningful? Does it mean this that you give a foot massage? Does that mean you can kill someone? Is it, is it something meaningful or not? Does it have meaning or not? Okay. Okay, and then it goes through all these things. And even when you go through the other stories, like Butch's story, so the watch, what is the meaning of the watch? Is what it meaningful? Watch? Ah, the golden watch. The golden watch, the of course. Forgot. Yeah, this. Where's my watch? Uh, and of course the case. What is the case? What is in the case? And we specifically, we specifically don't know what's in the case. It's critical of uh, this American culture that doesn't have something that, uh, that is meaningful, like in the, mean way, in the way that Jules finds meaning at the end of the film. Jules said that he finds meaning in the words that he has been speaking for years only after what happened to him. It's very important to say that he himself acknowledges that what he had put meaning in like all his life to this verse Yeah. He now understands that he didn't understand the meaning himself. And now he finds that it has a new meaning to him, something that is different than what he thought it was before. And I think that the only character that changes, only character that changes, I think this is where we really differ, is yeah. Jules. I agree. I think that we don't see how the other characters change, but we can imagine how they change uh, mm -hmm. in the future. Exactly. Also, I think, I think Butch. He had that moment that he could, he hated Marcellus. Yeah. He could go, but he's like, okay, there is a limit here. Those guys are worse no, than I, anything I, I really else. I disagree about that, exactly. I, like a lot of people find Butch, you know, and Jules like as being like main characters. And I actually see him as a kind of a decoy. Tarantino is kind of telling you, look somewhere else for a bit and gives you like the, the only information that you need to know through that story. which is very little. The only thing that's important in that story, that's really important, I find, in the story for the plot, now I'm talking not for the entertainment, whatever. Okay. but for the plot, is that it ki he kills Vincent in a randomly stupid way, kind of. But that's the only thing that's important in Butch's story to the plot, to Jules' plot, because from here we learn what's the implication of Jules' decision to change his life. Right. Because so he would have been there, maybe. Yeah, so when we get to the diner scenes, when Jules says, okay, I'm changing my life, and he does it, and we know that Vincent doesn't change his life, so we know now that the implication is that he's going to live and he's going to die. You really thinking about quitting? The life? Yeah. Most definitely. Fuck. Okay. Put the phone on the Put Butch's main, you know, characteristics, and like, what's his core? What's Butch's core's character? Like, uh, what is it? What's his, what is drive? What is, what is, uh, it's very obvious. It's very... Oh, okay. Sorry okay. that I didn't uh, <laughs> think about it immediately. Let me think about okay. it. Okay. What is drive? What is passion? What, what, what's his character? Like, how, he de how does he define his character? I think he has like a, like a fuck you tendency to the world, to the man, trying to keep me down. That man is right now, for him in his mind, Marcelos. Give it to the man. Give it to the man, it's fighting automatically. Boom, boom, boom. No, I'm not gonna accept that. Pride. Oh, pride, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More specifically, it's a, lot, it's a lot to do with male kind of machoistic pride. First of all, the defining moment for him is when he is handed the golden watch. That's his defining moment. It symbolizes like, This got down from his grandfather to his father, which got, everybody took it to the war, and it's like this kind of male kind of, yeah, we're taking this watch, and I'm gonna put it in my ass and, you know, and die for it because it's so important. And it's not important, it doesn't have any meaning. But for him it does have meaning, exactly. this is why he takes a risk. For him it's all the meaning, that's all his meaning. For him he has to go, when he says like, I didn't care about anything, he just had to go bring me the fucking watch, right? That's, that's his whole character. It's kind of a stereotypical kind of male ideal about pride and this is like what handed over through their generations yeah. and we're gonna fight about this we're gonna fight about this thing this, it, yeah. it, we're gonna die for this thing and it doesn't mean anything right, right? you want to say to butch all the time like forget the fucking watch right what yeah, yeah. why does it mean that who cares about the watch who cares about the watch the same time telephone on check it 
like that moment that everybody talks about, oh, he goes back, right? He goes back to save Wallace. I would say that's exactly his character. I mean, what takes him back is pride. It's like the, exactly the same thing that doesn't let him like take the fall, right? The machoism. A man doesn't like walk away from something that, that, that happened right there, right? He doesn't walk away. No. no, he goes and gets the bat. He goes yeah. and gets the sword. He goes and does what he needs to do. To yeah. do. So actually that, that moment, as defining moment, is a defining moment for him as like he manages to do what his grandfather and father did, like went to the war and killed whatever. He went into hell because he's a man. So that's a defining moment for him as this. But it's exactly his character, it's exactly his, his plot, you know. It, he didn't change anything. Okay. But do you think that he cares so much about the watch afterwards? I think so. I think he didn't change at all. You know, there was one bit that they didn't like when Jules uh, wants to tell the quarter pounder with cheese story to Brad, the guy who eats the burger and drinks yeah. the milkshake. He says, do you know uh, why they don't call it quarter pounder in Europe? And he's like, white Brad tells him because of the metric system. And Jules didn't know that right before. He's like, oh, look at the brain on Brad. That's what he didn't like about the I movie. Didn't like <laughs> I didn't like it. Oh, because of the metric system? Check out the big brain on Brad. You're a smart motherfucker, that's right. <laughs> Why? Because... Uh... But this, I think, plays into racial stereotypes. The young college white kid tells the, the, the black man, tells him, oh, I know something that you don't know. He's like, oh... <laughs> going back to my meaning theory, is that when there's no true meaning, like in a way true, and I'm, I'm not telling them, but the, you don't find God, <laughs> like there's no God, for example, right? Like in a culture there is no God, and where the God is um, movie stars, and merchandise, and, you know, icons. So that's the currency, you know. One is two Monroe's. No, there's not. That is Marilyn Monroe. That is Mamie Van Dorn. The ones with the currency are the ones that know as many movie stars or know how hamburger is called in France or know like all these things that have no meaning are applied to the meaning that used to or maybe should be or I don't know but that could have been gone to something which is more spiritual let's call it. Yeah, okay. So when there's now spiritual kind of core then these things are the currency and these people that live in this world yeah. use this as currency right this is why also it's called pop fiction exactly pop as being, yeah exactly that so the for me the movie is about like finding this meaning and it's very interesting like that he has the watch you have the watch as a meaningful point for butch and this watch i got here was first purchased by your great grandfather during the first world war it was bought in a little general store in knoxville tennessee this was your great-grandfather's war watch, and he wore it every day he was in that war. And, and you have the, the suitcase as a meaningful, like, item. Wait, what is it? What is it? And so the two, like, centers of meaning, which is actually the clock for Butch. Watch. The watch, yeah, so watch for Butch. And you have the suitcase, which is kind of a representative of Wallace. Because Wallace is the kind of authority for Vince and Jules before, right? He's the man and he, whatever he says, that's the meaningful. If he says this is meaningful, like the suitcase is meaningful, then you'll kill for that suitcase, yeah. right? Then because he said it's meaningful, not because what's inside, we don't know what's inside, we have no idea. Yeah. Now, the watch and the suitcase are both a, a plot device, okay? It's called a MacGuffin in, in it. So MacGuffin, right, is something that the characters are, is very important for the character. It moves the characters, it moves the plot forward, but the audience doesn't care about it. It doesn't, it has no meaning for the audience, right? So it can be like anything from like, a, you know, for spy movies, it will be like this, we need to get the, the, um, the bombs or we need to get the, the blueprint for something. And sci-fi movies, uh, we have to have this cube that destroys the world. Their damn village happens to be resting on the richest unobtainium deposit within 200 clicks in any direction. For the audience, who cares about the cube, right? What the fuck is that? But it moves the plot along mm -hmm. because the actors and the characters need yeah. to fight for it, they need to go for it, need to get it, need to whatever. So 
these are two MacGuffins in these movies, which, right. which both of them, one of them, we don't know what it is in, specifically don't know what's inside, we don't know what it is. So it's actually like Tarantino saying, look, this is a plot device. Right. This is something, yeah, look at this MacGuffin, <laughs> almost yeah. for someone on Stan Cinema. Right. Yeah, we have this light, it's so spiritual and everything, six, but six, six, it doesn't yeah. mean anything. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole idea of the MacGuffin. If a MacGuffin has meaning at the end of the film, it usually means it's a bad MacGuffin. Okay, so if you're still worried about the cube in the head of the movie, and that's all you think about is the cube, it's a bad movie, right? Because it doesn't mean anything. Let's watch. And if he didn't go to take the watch, Butch, then he wouldn't have killed Vince, wouldn't have met exactly. Wallace, exactly. This wouldn't have been raped. Yeah, if it, if it wasn't so important to him, right? If it wasn't so like, oh, the watch. The watch. Five long years he wore this watch. Up his ass. Then he died of dysentery. And it's actually, it's masterful the way it goes from something which is very serious, kind of, like, in, you know, in the scene. And it's shot beautifully in a way that it, you already from the beginning understand there's something very awkward and something very strange in this scenario with this boy. You see it's for the POV of the boy, yeah. it's for his point of view. But it's a very wide lens, which kind of already starts to, f like, you're feeling like you're seeing through him, but it's distorted. It has this distorted feeling about like the reality that is mm. being fed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think the three films, like these first three films, the gangster films, deals a lot with him himself trying to enter, um, let's call it the um, director's pantheon, the American director's Hollywood pantheon, like his way, his his voyage to get there. Like his, all his characters there need to make it. Mm. If you say, like, get away with the loot, in a way, right? Or give it to the man, or... Alright. What did you say to the man? I didn't say it. I said it a lot of times to the man. Yes? Of course. I don't know if we have it on camera. Do you remember the phone to the man? Something. Ah, yes, something to the man. Okay, Asi. I had a great time. I had a great time. Our resident cinematographer and co-founder of the Vivi app. The Shazam of movies and TV shows. So thank you everybody for watching. Thank you. Subscribe to get all our Tarantino, uh, yes, uh, future Tarantino videos. And if you want to get more Pulp Fiction content. Vivi, we're now uh, we're also adding Rick and Morty and we're also having the Marvel Universe, adding the Marvel Universe. Okay, and what so, uh, will people who like Pulp Fiction specifically now, if they click the link, what would they find? Uh, we'll find everything we want to know about uh, Tarantino's like stories behind the scenes, objects that you can buy and purchase, um, music, all the music that air in the films. Analysis about the movies. Analysis. And also you can actually come and add your content to this platform, add your content to this, uh, contribute to this ongoing venture. Oh, can I do that? Yes, So can. this video will also be there? Yes, it will. <laughs> okay. All right. So thank you for everybody for watching. We'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Ciao. Wow, that was a great video. Great video. Wow. I really feel like you want to share this video with your friends, right, on your social media platform. I can sense that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better do that. You'll feel better.